You have heard that it was asked, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Why does God allow good things to happen to bad people? But I tell you, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one, there is no one who understands, there is no one who seeks God. All have turned away, they have together become worthless, there is no one who does good, not even one. Welcome to our podcast where we discuss the case of Tabo Bester, a convicted from South Africa, and explore the concept of human depravity and the search for redemption. Bester's actions raise questions about why bad things happen and why good things happen to bad people. He had escaped from a South African prison by faking his own death and was recently apprehended in Tanzania along with his girlfriend and another accomplice. Bester, known as the Facebook rapist for his use of social media to lure victims, had a history of heinous crimes, including the rape and murder of his model girlfriend and other offenses against women. We delve into the historical and philosophical perspectives on human depravity and the ongoing debate surrounding it. Bester's story serves as a stark reminder of how sin can corrupt the human mind and lead to horrific acts. We discuss the details of his escape and the subsequent manhunt that led to his capture, raising concerns about the management of private prisons and the role of security companies like G4S. We reflect on the dark reality of human depravity and its consequences, but also highlight the importance of redemption and the hope for transformation. We explore the role of faith, grace, and the need for effective prison management in ensuring public safety. The case of Tabo Bester brings attention to the challenges faced by law enforcement agencies in apprehending fugitives and sheds light on the inherent sinfulness of humanity. Through this discussion, we aim to understand the concept of human depravity and the path to redemption. According to the doctrine of total depravity, humans are inherently sinful and cannot seek God or do good on their own because of their fallen nature. Sin has corrupted every part of human existence, including the human will and intellect. This means that humans, in their natural state, cannot seek God or save themselves. However, the Bible also teaches that God, in His grace and mercy, takes the initiative to seek and save those who are lost. Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, John 6 verse 44. It is the Holy Spirit who convicts and enables people to seek God and respond to His invitation of salvation. The connection between total depravity and the teaching that no one seeks God emphasizes the need for God's intervention in human salvation. It highlights that salvation is solely the work of God, not based on human effort or merit. Humans are entirely dependent on God's grace and mercy for their salvation, even the faith to believe in God is a gift from God, Ephesians 2 verse 8. It also emphasizes that without God's drawing and enabling, no one would naturally seek God due to their fallen nature. Some churches may use the term seeker-friendly to describe their approach to evangelism, which focuses on creating a welcoming environment for those searching for spiritual truth. However, this does not imply that humans, in their natural state, are actively seeking God. Rather, it emphasizes the importance of creating opportunities for people to encounter God and respond to His invitation of salvation, knowing that it is ultimately God who draws and enables people to seek Him. In conclusion, the concept of total depravity in Christian theology highlights the fallen nature of humans and their inability to seek God or do good on their own. It underscores the need for God's intervention in salvation and emphasizes that it is God who seeks and saves the lost. While some churches may use the term seeker-friendly to describe their approach to evangelism, it is important to understand that it is ultimately God who enables and draws people to seek Him. Total depravity is a Christian concept that teaches that all humans are born with a sinful nature and cannot save themselves through their own good works. The question why is being a good person not enough to get you into heaven challenges the idea that human goodness alone can merit salvation, aligning with the concept of total depravity. The story of the rich young ruler in Matthew 19 verses 16 to 26 illustrates this concept. 
The young man assumes that his own goodness and moral efforts are enough for salvation, but Jesus challenges him by pointing out that only God is truly good and that keeping commandments alone is insufficient. Jesus exposes the young man's self-righteousness and reveals his need for salvation through faith in Jesus himself. The question why does God allow good things to happen to bad people relates to total depravity as it acknowledges that wicked people may seemingly prosper despite their sinful nature or actions. The answer suggests that the apparent prosperity of the wicked is temporary and illusory, and that their ultimate destiny is destruction. It emphasizes the importance of seeking truth and contentment in God's word and finding fulfillment in a relationship with him, rather than envying worldly prosperity. This perspective aligns with the doctrine of total depravity, which emphasizes the fallen nature of humanity and the need for salvation through God's grace rather than relying on worldly success. In summary, total depravity teaches that human beings are inherently sinful and cannot save themselves through their own efforts, and the questions posed challenge the notion that human goodness alone can merit salvation or that worldly prosperity is a true measure of success. It emphasizes the need for faith in Jesus Christ and fulfillment in God, rather than relying on human goodness or worldly prosperity for salvation and fulfillment. Why does God allow good things to happen to bad people? This is a puzzling question, similar to why bad things happen to good people. It often comes up when we witness what seems to be unfairness in the world. The 73rd Psalm provides an answer, as the psalmist, Azaf, also struggled with the same dilemma. Azaf was a leader of a temple choir and dedicated his life to serving God. However, he found himself in distress as he observed the prosperity of the wicked around him. These evil people seemed to have it all, no struggles, good health, and freedom from burdens while Azaf struggled financially and in his devotion to God. He began to envy them and questioned why God would allow such unfairness. Many of us can relate to Azaf's struggle. We may dedicate our lives to serving God, yet we see ungodly people around us enjoying worldly pleasures and riches, while we face difficulties. However, Azaf's perspective changed when he entered the sanctuary of God. He realized that the prosperity of the wicked is temporary and illusory. Their ultimate destiny is ruin and destruction, as God despises them as fantasies. In contrast, those who have true riches, eternal life in God, are the ones who truly prosper. Azaf came to understand that Satan, the ancient deceiver, had used lies to distract him from the reality of God. Prosperity in this world is fleeting, like a pleasant but short-lived dream. Azaf rebuked himself for his envy and ignorance, and his thoughts turned back to finding joy and fulfillment in God. He realized that true happiness and prosperity are found in being near to God and making him his refuge. As Christians, we may not have everything we desire on earth, but we can have confidence in the eternal prosperity that comes through Jesus Christ. Temptation may lure us towards worldly prosperity, but we should remember that it is a dead end. The narrow road of following Jesus is the only path to eternal life, and that should be our source of joy and comfort. We should keep our focus on our Creator and seek His presence through His Word, where we can find truth, contentment, spiritual riches, and eternal joy. So, the question of why God allows good things to happen to bad people can be understood through the lens of eternity. The temporary prosperity of the wicked is illusory, while true riches and fulfillment are found in being near to God. As Christians, we should focus on our relationship with God and trust in His providence, knowing that ultimate prosperity and fulfillment are found in Him. The question of why God allows bad things to happen to good people is a challenging and complex issue. As finite human beings, we cannot fully comprehend the purposes and ways of an eternal, infinite, and omniscient God. However, there are certain truths and perspectives from the Bible that can provide clarification and deeper understanding. Firstly, it's important to acknowledge that there are no good people in an absolute sense. All of humanity is tainted by sin, as scripture affirms. Jesus himself said, no one is good, except God alone. 
sin has infected the world, leading to injustice and suffering. The book of Job in the Bible addresses the issue of why bad things happen to good people. Job was a righteous man, yet he faced immense suffering. Despite not understanding why God allowed those things to happen, Job expressed trust in God, saying, Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him, and the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away, may the name of the Lord be praised. Job's reaction exemplifies the attitude of trust and faith even in the midst of inexplicable suffering. Tabo Bester's story is a powerful example of the devastating effects of sin according to Christian theology. His criminal actions highlight the depths of human depravity and the dire consequences of sin on individuals and society. However, Bester's story also offers hope through the grace and mercy of God, showing that redemption is possible even for those who have sinned. The Bible teaches that as Christians, we need to acknowledge the reality of human depravity and the need for redemption through faith in Christ. It reminds us of our fallen nature and the importance of God's grace and forgiveness in our lives. Bester's story also highlights the power of repentance and transformation through God's redeeming work in the lives of individuals who turn away from their sinful past and seek a new life in Christ. In addition, the Bible encourages obedience to authorities and laws of the land, while also acknowledging that there may be instances of wrongful accusations or unjust circumstances resulting in innocent individuals being imprisoned. Even in such situations, the Bible offers the hope of spiritual and emotional freedom through Jesus Christ. It reminds Christians that they can find solace in the midst of difficult circumstances, such as being in jail or prison, through their faith in Jesus Christ, who came to set people free from the bondage of sin. In conclusion, the Bible teaches that while being in jail or prison can be a consequence of breaking the laws of the land, Christians are also called to endurance, faith, and hope in the midst of unjust situations. Through faith in Jesus Christ, there is hope for redemption and restoration, even in the face of the consequences of sin. It is a reminder to strive for a world where compassion, justice, and forgiveness prevail, and where all individuals have the opportunity for redemption and renewal.